version of the independence. We talk about what's going down up in this wrestling business. Hosted by the boss, his name is Cody Fleming. That's the homeboy. Go home, boy, before you get evicted. We about to get it on. Your boy Josh Harper, the favorite general. The real deal, him, baby Bills is a beast with the mouthpiece. Talk dumb, end up on the floor. Tell me when to go. Every week we do this. Hit him with a little bit of sweet chin music. And I only beef over cake like Brutus. The barber, and then over him, I dub. Go hard like. Where do we come from? What do we do? Dissect matches and break down moves. You are tuned in to an interlude. When I look into the middle of your mind, that's an interview. Independent, you better get with the movement. We only win and we never been in the losing. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube and see us on the news. On the Hello news. and welcome to episode 34 of Michigan Independent Weekly. I'm one of your hosts, Cody, and these other two gentlemen are... Josh and Dan. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're watching on YouTube, please smash the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to make it gray. That's right. You know you've done it correctly if it goes red to gray. That's right. If you'd like to be notified of new content, click the bell. And you would. You got to be notified because this week, Cody's got not one interview, but two interviews coming up Those. on the Wrestling Rage channel, r2youtube.com. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you're going over to r2youtube.com because two interviews are coming up this week. That's twice the amount of interviews. That's fantastic. Look at Cody always doing stuff for you. I'm trying to get my job back. I got fired a little bit ago. Um, <laughs> So you want to make sure to hit that bell because not only is there, of course, MIW, you know that because you're watching it right now. There's wrestling raids, there's interviews, and there's matches. So with all the content that's always available, you want to make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to stay on top of everything that's going on. Make sure you're going over to Facebook, though, and like the MIW page and the Wrestling Rage page to stay up to, go, stay up to date with all the different stuff we're talking about and up to date with all the newest information because... Hopefully, there should be a bunch of new information. Yeah, when we get back to it, make sure to tell them it's at M I D U B B M I dub. M I dub, not M I W, M I dub, because every wrestling fan says dub. Well, hey, hey, hold on. Here you go. What? We're forgetting it again. What? Well, we got to thank our sponsor. It's true. We'd like to thank BCWA. You can go to their Facebook at GoBCWA, or you can catch them online at GoBCWA.com. Is that it? Well, I figured I'd allow you to go into business for yourself. Well, fine. If you're going to let me go into business for myself, I'll go into business for myself. Also, make sure to go well, to you the Happy Harper page. I don't let you. <laughs> Make sure to go to the Happy Harper page. Give us a follow. Check out some of our amazing ice cream flavors. If you're in the Port Huron area, we're still doing contactless delivery. So you can get all the amazing flavors right now. I got a freezer full of ice cream. And whew, everybody loves Shogun ice cream, Chocolat, cookies and cream. And then, of course, Billy Ray Daniels ice cream for if this is making you go a little crazy. Hey, you know what the best thing that he said was? What? Contactless. Man, how, you ain't going to get better than that. You don't have to see this guy. <laughs> well, he like, just drops it off at the door. Let me ask you, Josh. Let me ask you. With, with contactless delivery, how do you distribute the funds? How do you get money? Well, you would leave money out, and then I would leave the ice cream, take the money, and then you would come get the ice cream. Oh. What it's is like, have you ordered pizza lately? I just ordered pizza for dinner today and I had to leave the money on the porch. And then the guy came and got the money and dropped the part of pizza off. And then he backed up and then I got the pizza. I just, I just pay on the app, bro. <laughs> I just pay on the app, bro. I don't like a paper trail. <laughs> for pizza. <laughs> Come on, man. All right. Anyways, don't forget that that's at, Happy Harper Ice Cream on Facebook. Sunday, April 19th, on episode 114, we're getting up there, on Wrestling Rage, we discussed some of our memorable moments in Michigan indie wrestling. We were unable to, to get through all the ones that we wrote down. Listen, that these are not all the memorable moments that we 
have. We have plenty. We have lots. These are some that we jotted down and, and that mean a lot to us. And I know the ones that I shared and have written down are a lot very personal to me specifically. They're not necessarily like, you know, historical moments in history uh, that are going to be, you know, whatever. But they are to me, right? They are to me. Right. Um, so we're continuing the conversation here on M-I-Dub. That's right, Cody. Last night on Wrestling Rage, well, the other night, Sunday night for you guys, on Sunday night, we had a discussion of our most memorable moments from indie wrestling. It was a real good conversation. I had a lot of fun. A lot of the real touching moments, heartfelt moments. Uh, you know, we agreed on a lot of them, too. A lot of the people in the chats agreed with us. If you're not on the Wrestling Rage live chats, I don't know what you're doing. But uh, a lot of the people in the live chats were agreeing with us, too. But, uh, hey, Danny, uh, what's one of the ones that you didn't get to do? You know what? I, I got to say... Um... One of the one that comes to my mind right now is uh, man, Eric Ely at Rising Action. Um, it was uh, <laughs> um, Mr. Ely, um, the super baby. He <laughs> um kind of lost his temper in a match with Robbie Keto. Ended up um sit out power bombing the referee, and then beating the holy hell. Out of Robbie Keto. Yeah, and, uh, uh, definitely you know, something that was a little crazy, right? Well, you know what? I, I got to say, I have never been more proud of, of Electric <laughs> Ely there. Um, he should have done it a long time ago. You think so? You know, I think you guys are making that up. Because, I mean, he's a good guy. I can't imagine him doing that. I mean, I've seen video of him doing it. You guys have talked about the fact that he did it, but I didn't see it with my own eyes because I didn't go to that show. You didn't so see... I think you guys are making it up. Wait a minute. Oh, dude. You, you, wait no, a minute. Yeah. You said you've seen the video, but you didn't yeah. see it with your own two eyes. So if you've seen the video, then you've seen it with your two eyes. I've also seen aliens blow up the White House. <laughs> are you saying this is a manufactured video from multiple it's conspiracy theory? Multiple sources have Fake posted. News. Multiple Fake news. Multiple sources. Have posted this video, sir. Fake news. Oh, you know what? Listen, listen. The the rage and the hate in that man's eyes. And that's what I I'm get, saying. Ely's such I a good guy. Uh, you know what I say? Mind boggling. I say to Mr. Electric Ely, embrace the hate. I don't. I don't know, man. I don't think I kind of agree with that. But you know, everybody has an opinion. Oh, it was destruction. It was destruction. <laughs> When he got mad, he destroyed two people. Well, you know, it's not that I don't necessarily dis disagree with destruction. I just don't think I don't really like Ely as a bad guy. That's just me. But that's my opinion. I right? applaud it. Right. That's my opinion. Right. Everybody has an opinion. There you go. Now, just like these memorable moments are a matter of opinion. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. here is one. And this one's going to throw you for a loop. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Yep. I don't remember which XICW, but it was XICW. All right. We were sitting. It was when we were getting our, we were still getting the six man booth. Okay. All right. We're in the six man booth. I don't know. I can't remember the match, but it involved DBA. DBA's in the match. And. Josh over here. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> Josh over here. I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know. Maybe he just didn't know what he was doing. Maybe he'd been drinking that night. I don't. Were you drinking that night? Nope. <laughs> no. No. I'm drinking I, tonight. But... I don't know how it came about. But Josh calls DBA old. And oh my God, DBA lost it and got right. I mean, he had to have been what, like right in your face. Oh, yeah. He threatened to stab Josh. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. And, and go ahead, Dan. No, I, I always refer to it as the tinkle night. <laughs> <laughs> and my so called friends are laughing at me instead of doing any kind of help. What do you want? I wasn't going to do. Gonna do? <laughs> 
tell me, what would you like us to do? I don't know. My black Did girl he physically done harm you? To protect me? Did he physically hey. harm you? No. We would have carried your car emotionally. In? Did he stab you? Mentally. <laughs> We would have carried your coffin. Don't even get that way. Oh. <laughs> so, it was DBA and Jamie Cox versus Carl and Tommy Vendetta in a tag team match. And that was season six. Yes. And he asked me why I was rooting for Carl and Tommy Vendetta. And I said, well, because they're young and you're old. <laughs> and um... <laughs> you and almost know. died. Yeah, almost died. So the funny story, the the funny thing is, is you run with it though, which makes it even more amazing of a story because yes, I don't know what was the mask. Do you have the mask? Do you yeah, have the mask? I have the mask. Go, can we go get it? I'll go get the mask. Go get the mask. So, I think I posted the picture actually on the, uh, um, on the MIW group page. Yeah. So Josh. <laughs> I don't remember. It was the next XI, I believe. Yes. The I, next two, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't. Well, I know one of them was Lincoln Park was at the memorial show. Yep. And I, I don't know if that was the first time the mask came out or if it was in at, at a proving ground. I don't remember. Um, So he comes to the proving ground wearing this mask that he's going to come back with. And uh, in a sign that says, uh, not Josh. Not Josh. Right. So he does this and nobody notices. Nobody says anything to him. And it's just this running joke for a while. And like, nobody says anything to him. It was just, it was hilarious, man. It was great. It was awesome. Uh, it was probably, you know, you don't know where it's at. I wore it to the grocery store and I'm not sure where I put it. <laughs> <laughs> you wore it to the grocery store. They said See, you wear masks, right? right? Right. Yeah, he well, he bought he brought it by into his own height. Remember when he told us that we wouldn't get anything if we wore the mask? Yes, yeah, that's true. Now, hey, that's Josh, what the governor said: wear a mask when you go to the grocery store. All right, so a couple questions, Josh. First, what is okay. the mask from? Uh, it's from my superhero costume I came up with years ago. It's called Super H. So it's a custom mask. Uh, no, it just came from Spencer's, and then I customized a little logo on the forehead. Okay. Um. <laughs> Did you piss yourself? No. <laughs> that, that delay makes me believe that you possibly tinkled. Listen, don't lie. Don't I, lie I to our fans. I possibly might have spilt something in my lap. <laughs> he tinkled just a little. You know he did. Ah, we were there. We saw the look on his face. We oh, know he did. Oh, man. I do remember sitting there going, he's the head of security. If, if he decides to do anything, no one's going to help me. My martial art friend is sitting here laughing at me. <laughs> was was Master Taylor there too? I no, do not I remember. I don't. Think I just remember you hee hawing, sitting on the back of the sitting on the back of the uh, the the bench. You're hee hawing. <laughs> My wife at the time sitting next to me. She's hee hawing. I'm sitting there tickling myself a little, thinking I might oh, die. He did. He admits show. it. He admits it. He just he said he tickled. Admitted it. He admitted it. We have it on record. Josh PB himself. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That, but listen, man, it was a great moment. And let, but you know what? No, we've all talked to DBA since then. You know, and it's not oh, like, yeah. like he really wanted to stab you. You know, he probably really did want to stab him. It was, it was, I remember, <laughs> I remember after it was all said and done and he looks over, he goes, I don't know if he really wanted to kill me or not. <laughs> the whole match. Every time he hit Karam, he would stare at me and go, is this old? Is this old? It was big. Jamie's holding him back from coming at me. <sighs> and then this ties in with one of my moments. I said, uh, right, February 2nd, 2019. At uh, BWCW, uh, Alex Weir versus MM3 was one of my moments I brought up on Wrestling Rage. But we were doing the ring crew for that. We're setting up for that. As soon as MM3 walks in, he comes up to me and go, what did you say to my dad? All week, <laughs> yes. 
all week he's been saying how you're mad he is at you. Not the words he used, but I don't feel like putting another dollar in the swear jar. So the next weekend, I'm sitting there like, he wants to stab me. I'm going to die. I already bought tickets for the next show. I don't know if I should go or not for my own safety. Yeah, um, you, you know what? Can I make a confession? Yeah. I put three up to that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Let me tell you the story, okay? I don't remember. <laughs> where was where was it going to be? There was a show where it was Blue Water, and then the next day was XI. I think that was when he said something to you. And then yes, the next it was. night was at XI. Dude, we were trying so hard to get MM3 to have DBA say something to you just to scare the crap out of you. But he wouldn't. I don't know why he didn't do it, but... It is what it is. Probably because he didn't want to have to pay for someone to clean up the seats. <laughs> <laughs> we were going we were going for the doo-doo the next time. Right, the doo-doo. <laughs> it wouldn't have been a tinkle. It would have been a waterfall. A what? <laughs> if he would have looked at me the wrong way next show. <laughs> oh, my Lord. That is, <laughs> that is great. So is that your moment? That was your moment right there? That was another memorable no. moment? No, oh, it was a, not. I was trying to hope people don't remember that moment. Oh, oh I was not going to let we you. We will know. always be reminding people of that always moment. Always remember that moment. Yeah. Well, no. You know what, though, bro? It's one of those things, man. It's just oh, yeah. like it's just like when um, Super Oprah at XI got me the 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 whatever. That, oh, yeah. That thing. Oh, I still got the video of that. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to post something a little later. <laughs> Please share it on the group. That's <laughs> so funny, isn't it? Oh, don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> I got plenty of video content. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. He's got so much blackmail don't on Don't play. Us. Hey, Josh, don't put that nowhere. <laughs> right. Anyways. What um, your moment, man? Give us a, your memorable moment, man. Uh, my next memorable moment would be uh, September second, two thousand nineteen. XSCW at the Crawfoot. The end of the show. DTA had an amazing match. Uh, Jack Christ and Aaron O'Ryan had an amazing match for the tag team championships against DBA and uh, Jamie Cox. They lost the match. At the end of the match, they shake hands. You know, it was an amazing feud that they had had. So DTA stays in the ring. Johnny Delicious and the rest of the Kira clan come out. Johnny Delicious says, it's okay that you lost, but it's not okay that you're okay with losing. And the Kira clan beat up Aaron O'Ryan and Jack Price. That was a, a very emotional moment. Ending with Alex Weir doing a kick to Aaron O'Ryan's head. I was not sitting with you, Cody. You were sitting upstairs. I'm downstairs, oh, and, and I heard you start swearing at Alex or uh, at Alex very loudly when he did it. That was a memorable moment for me. Yeah, Warrior Rampage was on Saturday, and then XICW was on Sunday, right? Yep, and you that's the first time I heard you very loudly boo Alex Weir. A lot of people said that once they seen it happen, they looked right at me to see my reaction. Yep. And I literally was just like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't believe this just happened. This oh, is, yeah. This is nuts. I can't believe this just happened. And I know all good things come to an end sometime. And <clears throat> this now allows for the GTA to be a thing in XICW. Yep. Which... We are now seeing here we are through an entire season, almost an entire season six, where um, there was that drama between DTA and the Kira clan. And now yes. most of season seven, you know, we sh should have been at the season finale on Sunday. Yep. But... <laughs> We are, you know, season seven has not ended yet officially, but yeah, man, that was, that was nuts, dude. 
Uh, we're just now getting to start to see the matches from that. You know, that we're almost a year out of that. You know yes. What I mean? And we're just now getting to see matches between DTA and the Kira clan or members yep. of doing single or, matches. Or DTA and Kira clan having to work together. Yeah. Yeah. Or the fun loving criminals having to work with DTA. Yeah. Against the Kira clan. I mean, because let's face it, let's be truthfully honest here, right? The Kira clan is a very dominant force within XICW. Yes. And trying know, to take over. Right. And they do hold a majority of the belts. I believe they don't, they don't you know, they don't hold the proving ground title. They don't hold the tag belts any longer. Nope. That's it. You know, they don't have the Noah tag team either. Right. Either. They, yeah. They don't have those. Well, yeah. Adam Wick does. So. Yeah. yeah. Adam Wick. Right. One and, half. Right. But. You know, and then Adam Wick and Alex Weir, you know, they're in Proving Ground. And so Dre Jacobs, TJ Meyer is also in Proving Ground. And, I mean, it's just DTA alone are, is a awesome tag team. But that's two against five or six people. Yeah. You right. Know? So. But if you know what? Hey, if I'm at Proving Ground and I got to pick two people to help me out against the Kira Clan and I'm DTA. Yeah, the fun loving criminals, that's the dudes I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, where does it go from here is very interesting. And it makes for a great story, doesn't it? Right. I mean, I mean, and the fact that you bring it up as a memorable moment or one of your memorable moments solidifies that fact. Oh yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and you know, it is one of my moments, you know, it's just not one that I wrote down. And right. I specifically remember the emotion flowing through me at that moment oh yeah you know i can remember the anger the rage the the betrayal the like all of it just all at once go oh what are you doing you know and it, oh yeah you know and, it was and it insane was, to say the least yeah. i think everyone everyone that, that all the, the the blue water championship wrestling people that were at that show to see and, you know, we had seen Alex go all the stages that he had gone through, and to see him yeah. do that, yeah. you know, it was kind of I mean, I, my jaw dropped. You started screaming. Yeah, Jason was sitting on stage and he started screaming at him. It was, yeah. Yeah, dude. it was insane. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> I mean, it was good, but it was bad, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, it was good, but it was bad. Uh, Danny, what you got, man? Give us another yes, one sir. of your moments, man. You know what? Mine was uh, um, at, at BCW, I got your six. Um, the return of Blake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, 182, man. Um, he was in a match with, it was the Dread King, Electric Ely, TJ Meyer, um, Crush and Steel. And uh, we all had thought that Blake wasn't going to be able to compete and now yeah, he comes we were under that impression because of a post yeah uh, yes social got, media he everybody yeah, yes he did. He yeah, he did. everyone and uh you know out comes blake um and man you know coming off that knee injury he held his own very well um unfortunately for him um he didn't win you know dread king retains um just the way that works yeah, well, it's definitely how that works when you're dealing with the Dread King. Yes. It, you know, um, and it's kind of a twofold thing, you know, with this one with me. Um, to see Blake return was, was great. Actually, it was kind of three. Um, you know, to see our homeboy retain his title was awesome. Um, against, you know, once again, a number of um, competitors. And then after the match, after the match is when the memorable thing comes, um, where, you know, usually we see, we see Blake is, um, you know, we've seen Blake get, get mad, um, but usually Blake is easy going, you know, um, he, he just wants to have a good match. He was PO'd. Oh, yeah. Right. right. He he believed that Eric, or, you know, Electric Ely stood in his way. 
and he took him out. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen Blake reach those heights with that frog splash. He almost hit his head. <laughs> oh, he was 10 feet, easily, easily 10 feet in the air. Right. Just, he almost hit his head on the sound, the um, sound reducers that are in there. Yeah. Yes, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to go ahead and say it. And, you know, you guys know, I don't know if everybody knows, but you guys know what a big fan I was of Eddie Guerrero. Um, Eddie Guerrero would have been proud of that frog splash. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I definitely would agree with that one. And something else that was amazing about that night, I mean, he didn't win the match. But the fact that even though he didn't win the match, he's one of your moments because of him coming back and him doing that frog splash says so much more than winning the match could. Yes. But also the fact that when Dread King came out first and everyone rooted for Dread King, and every person that came out after him, everyone rooted for Dread King until Blake came out. That's the first yeah. time the crowd started chanting for someone besides him. Mm -hmm. And that screams volumes about the wrestler and the man that right. Blake 182 yeah, is. When, when, yeah. When you, know, when you and, do something bad and you still get cheered, that's, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a big well, deal, you know, dude. Blake cemented himself as I'm back. I'm coming and ain't nobody going to stand in my way, right, you know? Right. And then he did the interview with us and he, he put it in, he put that into words, you know, I'm here, stay out of my way because if you get in my way, I'm going to hurt you. Right. And you know, he, and he said, didn't he, care who it was. Right, you know, he, he said, I don't care. Right. He's on a straight path to get the title. One of them. Yeah. He didn't say I'm going to beat you. He said, I'm going to hurt you. Right. Yes, that's what he's he not said. talking about getting a one, two, three. He's talking about making an example out of anyone that gets put to that has the displeasure of being put in his way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and that's it. That's why, you know, that's one of my, that's why that's one of them. I mean, we could probably sit here for forever and talk about great moments, great things that we've seen um, just in Indies, you know, because yeah. um, we've seen some, some spectacular matches. But, uh, you know, that's why that one is is definitely one of my most memorable because, um, man, wow, we've seen a whole different Blake. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so my moment would be, I don't remember the date. I don't, I just know the match. And it was, it was formerly known as Aqua Bra, Cyrus Satine, Bra, Bra, Aqua Bra, Cyrus Satine, now Mark Ross. Against El Ridiculoso at Pro Wrestling All Stars in Melvindale at Play Atlantis for the Pro Wrestling All Star Cruiser Corps Championship. I had no idea. I had no idea. Um, he had actually flew in <clears throat> from Florida and literally got out of his car, walked in, put on his gear, and was in a match just like that, pretty much. Um, you know, he. His flights were canceled, a bunch of stuff. He ended up he ended up finding a flight here, got here, had to fly in on the west side of the state, and then somebody drove him all the way from the west side of the state to Melvindale for Pro Wrestling All Stars. <clears throat> so he faces uh, El Ridiculoso, great great guy, and uh, matter of fact was Mark's partner for Proving Ground. And yes. one proving ground with Mark. Um, so I'm filming and the, the match is up on the, the YouTube channel. Uh, you'd have to look it. I believe it's in the aqua bra um, playlist. If you look it up, but so he goes against El Ridiculoso. It's a great match. And uh, Mark rolls him over for a cover. One, two, three and i popped i he won the title he gets pro wrestling all-star cruiser core championship but i'm there to watch it and i'm 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 ecstatic dude i'm ecstatic like a little kid dude and uh, i was i was really excited for him and what was even cooler is is that same night uh inside play atlantis i sit down with him and interview him after you know i've interviewed him a few times now but uh, interviewed him after winning the uh, the Cruiser Corps Championship, and we talk about his 
his crazy trip to get to Michigan so that he can make the booking and a lot of other things. But that's one of my moments, and I was really happy that I was there to to see it. It was it was good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. That was um, our August August sixteenth of last year. That match was, and um, that was that was an amazing time for me. I was going through a lot of stuff in my life, and it's when me and you started hanging out a lot more, and we started going to the wrestling show. So it was amazing to get to go to that show with you and watch Cyrus win. And like you said, the fact that I mean, we can't you can't overstate the fact he literally got there. 10 minutes before the show started, if that. Right. And, and then it was, okay, cool, it's time to wrestle. And he was he was there, he got dressed and got in the ring. And to be able to win that match and to do everything he had to do to literally get to the, the ring and then to get yeah. to the ring and win that match and then afterwards do that interview. And it's, uh, I think it was the second time, maybe the first time that you ever let me use the camera to uh, record a match. <laughs> And I'm still sitting there like, oh, Cyrus is right there. And he's holding that new belt. He's so happy just to be holding that belt. And he's smiling so big. And you're smiling to see him. And he's smiling. And it was a it was a wonderful night. Yeah, he's he's a real good cat, man. I, I have a lot of respect for Cyrus or Mark now. Uh I him and I, the la- I don't remember which it was the time he came back and his, his uh, arm was messed up. He was supposed to go against Pillman and, uh, or was it Pillman? He was supposed to go against, or yep. was it Blake? I can't yeah. remember. Pillman. Pillman blue water. Arm, yeah. It was arm was messed Blake up. ended up taking his spot. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, him and I sat for a little bit and we were just kind of talking, man. And he just, he gave me a new, a new, uh, way to think. And I wasn't yes. new. It was just, he opened my eyes to some things, you know what I'm saying? And, and made me rethink what I was doing. And how I was doing it. Um, not he did. It wasn't like he said, "Hey, you need to do this or you need to do that." And it wasn't directed that way at all. It was just a conversation that him and I had in general about life and wrestling. And out of that conversation, I took some things from the conversation and said, "Hey, I need to do this in my life and what I'm doing with wrestling rage." You know what I mean? And, and, um, I will, I will always be, um, in debt to, uh, Mark. Uh, I highly respect Mark and will continue to do so. And will follow his career, uh, until he decides to hang him up for sure. Mm-hmm. And, uh, who's next? It'd be Josh. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess I'm following that moment. Thanks for, you know, setting the bar up there. (laughs) (laughs) I got away with words. I'm sorry, man. What do you want me to do? Suck just a little bit more. Make it easier for me, man. Take take tips from Danny. Make things easy for me. Oh, (laughs) you're not supposed to be the bad guy, Josh. This is why Danny doesn't like me. Um, So, uh, I mean, I, I, of course, just like you guys, I came up with a big, huge list and had to slim it down. Right. I've technically already had my five, but you guys took a bunch of them. So I came up with one more <laughs> and, um, it was uh, December 28th of 2019 BCWA, the dread King Logan versus Tommy Vendetta versus Adam Wick. The match was amazing. Because every match with Dread King in it is amazing. Every match with Adam Wick in it is amazing. Every match with Tommy Vendetta is amazing. You put them together, and it was the reason I bought a ticket. It was the reason I needed to go to that show. I believe that um, was one of the first ones where, like, we had been to BCWA before, but I believe that was the first one we all went together, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it was. And Because it was you, me. Uh, Danny, Skyjacker, and I brought a friend with me from work. Yep. And um, the, at the end of the match, because, I mean, it, it should have been an easy win for DTA. It's the way it should have been, because it was really DTA versus Dread King Logan for the Alliance Championship belt. But apparently, you know, between the fact that there was a lot of infighting with DTA once they tried to decide who was actually going to win the belt, and the fact that they're not a 10-year-old and only 10-year-olds can beat him for a championship belt, meant that 
You're gonna, You're die. Trying to die. You're gonna, You're gonna die. die. You're gonna die. So they had to, they they lost that match, but I'm cutting that uh, out and sending it to him. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh dude, yeah, hey, that should be the one. That should be the one that we always put up. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Uh, Dread King Logan does the, what's called the I got it written down. The Logan driver, the Logan driver off yeah. the ropes. So he takes Tommy Vendetta and does the Logan driver off the ropes into him. Now, Cody, you had recorded this match, so I know it's on Wrestling Rage. The BCWA has it, so it's on their page. But if you actually look up the Dread King Logan's YouTube page, he has a copy of it. And from where his video is taken, you can see us. And when he hits that move, because we're all sitting there like, that ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. And when he does that move, all of our jaws drop. And there's the second we're all just, what? And then he pins them for the three. And we're all like, just wiggle your toes. Wiggle your toes. Are you yeah, I think, I think Tommy Vendetta got two inches shorter after that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. It was an amazing move. And it's one of those times where all three of us just for, for the briefest of seconds. And it's not often you can tell me I'm silent. But for the briefest of seconds, all three of us were sat in shocked silence after this. And then when it was one, two, three, it's like, he beat two members of DTA to retain? And and, and he did that? It was that, absolutely amazing. Yeah, that Fantastic. Is, that is, I do, that is one of the nights that uh, absolutely made me a believer. A believer in what? That you can put a whole roster up against the Dread King, and it's still going to be forever. But what did Josh say? What did that he, say? he could get beat by a 10-year-old? Isn't that That's what Josh said, right? That's what Josh said, yes. Yeah, Josh that's... Harper, Josh Harper of Happy Harper said that the Dread King gets beat by 10-year-olds. Josh Harper said that. I've been drinking. I can't be held accountable for my words. Liar. And he knows where you live. And why are you drinking and I'm not? What's up with that? No wrestling. <laughs> I don't know. You know, um, Dread King did say that he had had a conversation about a week ago with uh, um, Dead House. And so I don't know. <laughs> you know. Might be nothing. You know, it might be nothing. Never know. Oh, great. So now you got next time we decide. So, you know, two years down the road, when we're doing another list of, hey, top five moments, you want to have another time. Hey, Josh, remember that time you almost peed yourself because Don Howison and the Dread King showed up at your house? I see how it is. I thought we were buddies. <laughs> Thank you to our sponsors, Happy Harper Ice Cream and BCWA. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. Absolutely. If you're catching this episode on Facebook or you're listening to the audio-only version, please head on over to r2youtube.com. That's the letter R, the number 2, youtube.com. Don't forget, you can now listen to us on Buzzsprout. So that way, if you want to hear this sultry voice without being distracted by my stunningly good looks, you can just listen to it while you're mowing the lawn, doing the dishes, or anything else you feel like doing while you're listening to a podcast. The link for that is in the description. Now, since we're talking about memorable moments, I had some bonus moments to throw out to you guys. Uh -oh. um, for me, it was uh, November 30th, 2018, which was the first time that Cody invited me on to Wrestling Rage and brought me a little bit more into his world. Thank you for that. We have September 2nd, 2019, which is the first time that we recorded MIW. And we spent more time laughing and screwing around than we did actually recording like we do every yeah. week. Like right now, we're at an hour and a half of recording this 30-minute episode, maybe, <laughs> just because we've been laughing so long. And uh, probably what one of the most important start? moments. What time do we start? Seven, Seven o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably one of the most important moments for me is uh, May 4th, 2019. It was uh, the first time that I was told my ice cream is so good, I should sell it, and it wouldn't be the last time that I'd be told it was good. So, 
And Happy Harper is doing fantastic stuff. Uh, right now, we're doing the ice cream of the crop. Ice cream of the crop winner right now is Billy Ray Daniels. So if you head on over to the Facebook page of Happy Harper or on the Michigan Independent Weekly, you can see the ice cream of the crop promo for Billy Ray Daniels, along with a interview that he did with Cody Fleming not that long ago. The new ice cream of the crop will be coming out this Friday. So if you want to find out who the new one is, stay tuned to the Happy Harper page to find out who that is. And while you're there, check out some of the amazing flavors that we have going on. Amazing flavors. Amazing. Chocolate is one of those ones. If you sit down, you're probably going to eat it all. Yes. (laughs) Shogun can, can do that to you though, too. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's so good that you, you want to hoard it. So you like, you save it all, and uh-huh. then and then you what? find out your kids eat it all and you get mad. Oh yeah! Every you know time what? I've sat down to eat Cyrus ice cream, I've put my spoon through the bottom of the container. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, you know, you know. Speaking of kids eating eating your stash, there, it was uh, the Dread King, the Dread King's coffee. Man, I, I love that stuff, and I love to savor it. So I only took like three bites the first time, and I put it away, and I thought, man. This is going to be so good tomorrow. Oh, and all day long the next day, I couldn't wait to get it. And I got home and my kids ate it. <laughs> they still alive? Yeah. Have you seen them? <laughs> There's more of them than there is of me. <laughs> but Josh, I I'm going to have to have the Dread King. I'm going to have the Dread King come over here since he's, since he's making his his whole thing about beating up multiple people at a time, just have him come over here and whoop my kids. There you go. So, uh, Josh, I did want to tell you, you are doing a great job with those graphics for the ice cream of the crop, and I really really like what you're doing, and I do want everybody to know this. That was all his idea. So, yeah, it's Thanks, man. Great. You're welcome. That's all his thing, and uh, and he, he made me kind of part of it, so that's cool, and I, and I appreciate that. Uh, don't forget to follow MI Dub or Michigan Independent Weekly on Facebook at MI Dub. That's M I D U B B. You will also find a link to the group on that page or in the description as well. You can also search for Michigan Independent Weekly on Facebook and find it. Thank you for spending your time with us. Make sure to tune in next week right here on YouTube for Michigan Independent Weekly. And remember, we're live every Sunday for Wrestling Rage at 8 p.m. We will see you next week. We are your hosts, Cody, Josh, and Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. See you later. Bye. Or I should, Bye. Say, I should say day, shouldn't I? Because it's going to be like morning time. Have a yeah, good. Mommy, what if they watch it later in the day? Have a good day. Yeah. Have a good whatever time. Have an awesome period. It's your life. Did wait you a minute. Just, wait a minute. Wait Did a minute. Just say we have don't an go awesome there. Period. Yeah, like whatever time of day. Yeah. Now that it's out there in the world, I know how that sounds. We have female viewers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done. Oh, Bye. Oh,